beast, didn't they? Chuffed to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel, welcome to the workshop. First things first, the fire's on in the background, so there'd be the odd pop and crackle. Um, won't disturb us. What are we have to today? Well, the thumbnail should give it away with the description. We're making LEDs, but specific. So we're running a series at the moment. We've looked at rods, reels, lines, shock leader. We've looked at setting up when we're at the beach. Today we're making LEDs and the film to follow will be making the rigs all for a balanced outfit. An outfit that's been designed right from the outset and these are the components we're using. So the first things first is you buy a mould kit and that does three different sizes. It does 130, 150 and 170 grams and the mould that comes inside that it's a three part mould come up to the camera get all intimate um, that's the mould uh, it's got locators for the wires it's got different settings for different sizes you know from the largest to the smallest and one in between um, so that's the mould we're going to use. To use the mould you need a pair of grips, you can buy a set of clamps, I've got these handy, why buy something when you don't need it? I've set them to the right size and that will hold it together whilst we're doing the pour. So that's the mould. As I said, comes with the kit parts and inside there are your grip weights, your bits of solo splashdown your central wire, your, your rubber tube in, the plastic adapter at the bottom, and all the gubbins. That comes in a kit and will make 10 weights. I worked it out, if you can supply your own lead, depending, you haven't robbed it off the church roof, um, if you've got scrap lead or you've got access to lead, um, a friendly roofer with lead flashing left over, buy it by weight, um, I think they work out at about 90 pence each. That's if you're supplying your own lead. Safety, safety critical, loads of ventilation, door wide open, window wide open, a workshop, it's a bit breezy in here anyway. Um, so that's the ventilated side of it. To look after my breathing apparatus, I've got a fume rated mask. To protect my eyes, I've got <laughs> Eddie the Eagle style glasses. <laughs> So you've got some glasses and then the one thing that I can't stress enough, a set of gauntlets that go up past your wrists so there's no chance of anything getting in. So a pair of welding gauntlets and finally a spoon. <laughs> What's the spoon for? It's for getting the dross out of the top of the pot. Um, I think that's covered everything. I've got a little selection of tools, I've got some pliers, a screwdriver, some snips and I've got everything laid out to hand. I feel this is quite ergonomic. I just move that just because I've noticed a little adjustment I can make. So everything is ergonomic, exactly where I want it, and I haven't restricted my access out of the door. So I've got my lead pot, waste shot I know, probably not the best shot we're gonna do, is it? But we've got the lead pot and I've got my lead. So I'm gonna switch the lead pot on. It is half full anyway, and it's more efficient if it's full. I'm just going to load it up and I, even as I'm putting this in I'm looking at it to check to make sure that it's not folded in half, it's, it's not got anything in it that might be detrimental. It certainly hasn't got any moisture in it, it is absolutely bone dry, I can't stress that enough. While I'm waiting for the lead pot to do its business and start to melt that lead I'm going to assemble the mould and pre-warm it, putting it at the lowest setting for the 6 ounce weight or 170 gram weight, place the wire inside and it locates, put the second half of the mould together, check that that is actually trapped and everything is located as it should, 
and then clamp it all together lightly you don't want to distort anything and and that is only an alloy so obviously it's got a higher temperature point than the lead but you don't want to squeeze and distort that so you use some you add some and you keep it clean so that's just going through the process now going full liquid and then we'll start cleaning it and you'll see the kind of stuff that we get out of it and this is what is just finely coated on the outside of that lead it's surprising how much you get actually <laughs> my spoon's just doubled in weight <laughs> I left it in there too long I'll just get this melted some more there we go I can see it now And you can tell when it's the right stuff. Look, look how dry that is. It's like just dry dirt that just gets skimmed off the top. And like I say, that lead was, I think it's just because it was old. You know, it's been left out in someone's garden or something, or it's, which is why you've got to make sure that it's absolutely dry. So that now is fully liquid just a little bit I can just see some residue on the surface not much this is the part that if the stone was wet that would flash that would explode that could really hurt you you've got to be 100% confident that everything you've got is bone dry no liquid at all and don't get tricked into thinking you can touch something because everything is molten metal so what we're going to do now is we're going to pre-warm the mold we've got liquid lead inside the container and that will stay liquid we're going to pre-warm the mold the gemini mold on top i can just feel the heat rising through that when i think that's pre-warmed enough we're going to go for a pour So I've just stood back, goggles and mask off. That's the first pour. Just give that a couple of seconds just to uh, just to solidify. Obviously, it's, it's pretty much solidified instantly. And then it's the reveal. Now, I don't expect the first pour to be perfect, but what it has done is put a lot of heat into that mould. And the temptation is to handle it too much. So I'm just going to set that to one side. I'm quite happy with it actually. Looks good. Happy with the way it's gone. Reform everything, which is always difficult now. Temptation is to touch it. <laughs> but that's got a lot of stored heat in that now. That is absolutely scorchio. I suppose if I was to say one part is the one chance where you might get scorched, burnt, too hot is putting your wire in, touch it as little as possible. Reassemble your mould, clamp everything together. That's still got all its energy inside it. I'm going to mask and, and, and goggle up again. And we go for another pull. And that's what we've actually ended up with. And all of the weights have got the poor nub. It's like a little funnel aspect. And that doesn't go to waste, because that can go back in the pot. So before I switch the pot off and let it cool down, I'm gonna take all of these nubs off, and I just use the strong, largest pair of pliers, and just give them a good twist. 
Sometimes they come off clean, sometimes they leave a little bit behind. So we just dean up all the weights. They're all fairly cooled down now. There's a few of a bit of residual heat, but in all honesty, I've still got my glove on because I think it's more habit than anything else. The day you forget and you go to pick up the last one that's still hot, <laughs> I'm going to squeal like a cheerleader. Hello and welcome back to day two. Day two of smelting leads. You're like, why is that taking so long? Because I had other things to do. So yesterday I smelted all the leads. Six ounce Gemini Solo Splashdown Grip Leads. I made 22 in total, 26 ounce, and I made two four ounce, just for variation. And that's where we ended up. So they are melted, smelted, wired and threaded, all ready for assembly. And we could just assemble them. But I've got another little, little trick up my sleeve that I want to use. So what I've been kindly lent, donated, powder coating. <laughs> so I'm going to red powder coat these. When I say red powder coat, that is a fully assembled shop bought Gemini Solo. Six ounce with the bait clip, with the paddle and the grip leads and the Gucci little wires and the little plastic bit. That is it in its entirety. That's where we're going. That's what we're making. That's the final product. But how cool would that be if that was bright red as well? And when I say that, I've had a little practice and a play. Sorry for going off camera. These are cooling down as we speak. That's what they come out like. I've got to clean the threaded end, a little bit of clean at the top, but that's a powder coated lead. <laughs> I've not done it before. I'm learning. And to powder coat it, and I'm back in the room. Um, and to powder coat it, I bought myself a, a pasty oven. <laughs> that's the best description. Someone's been cooking, so I can smell sausage rolls. <laughs> Someone's, I paid 20 pound for it. Um, I looked on a buying website, something to do with, and not the, you know what I mean. Um, and if you don't, I'm sorry. Um, I've got a pasty oven, it was 20 quid. The grief I would have got from Mrs. W for using her oven, it was worth £20. So I've now got a powder coating oven in the workshop. I'm thinking boat stuff, you know, I've got, I've got all sorts of things. My, my, my imagination's been lit up. I'm going to powder coat the world. <laughs> Anything that will fit in the oven, if it stands still long enough, it's getting powder coated. <laughs> so what have I done? Okay, right. Let's get a glove on and let's show you because I don't want to burn my tootsies. So inside my pasty oven, the wire tray, I've attached Gemini links. Oh, that's getting warm. <laughs> it's coming through the glove. <laughs> I've got Gemini links. And Gemini links, quick links, are just the right, so I can hang a weight on it. That's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna do a batch of weights. How many have I got here? Two, four, six. I've got six weights. So I've removed the nubs on the side. I've dressed it off with a bit of a, a roughish knife just to make it smooth. I'm gonna hang that inside the oven. And you're gonna say, oh Mark, you haven't got your glove on. Well, because I can't feel or see what I'm doing and it gets more likely to burn myself. <laughs> I'm just being very cautious. I know it's a hot oven. Um, I'm just hanging these weights inside. And before we powder coat them, and I'm keeping the door shut as much as possible because it's a small oven, it loses its heat quite quick. We want to retain that heat. Um, yeah, so I've got six weights here. And what I have done by practicing just a minute ago is I double dip them. Heat them up, dip them in the powder coat powder, the coloured powder. Check to see that the weight was hot enough by if the powder adheres to the weight or not. Right. There's six in there cooking. So they're in warming up. That's like watching paint dry, grass grow, whatever you want to describe it as. 
So what I am going to do now, switch the camera off, beaver around doing something else, and when they're hot enough, we'll have a zoom in and we'll powder coat them. It's all exciting stuff. So the powder, they're getting hot, powder coat's ready. I'll be back with you in a minute. The leads have pre-warmed in the oven now. So we'll take one out, being careful that we don't touch anything. That lead is now 200 degrees. And dip it in the powder. I'll give another close up in a minute, but I'll show you the process first. So we just completely cover the lead and a gentle tap to remove any surplus. Make sure we've got full coverage. And again, remove any excess. And I'll usually get a lower grip because now I'm going to position it in a different position in the oven, in a different place. And then when we take the next one out, we repeat the process. So I do my best to keep my um, clumsy paws out the camera shots, give you the best view that I can. And I will have to change positions a couple of times. So you just dip the lid in, make sure you've got full coverage from the Swiss Army utility spoon. Used for smelting yesterday and powder coating today. Mrs W don't realise I've taken it yet, so I'm in proper trouble because it's trashed. And then when I get my lower grip, I sort of position it back in. Take off the excess. You can see it's hot enough because it's already starting to melt the powder. Going back in the oven completes the cycle. The ones on the left were the ones I did first. The middle ones were the second. And you can just see as it's starting to change in colour. And the one on the right was the last one. And that still looks quite dull. So they're nearly complete. But I won't take them out until they're all all matching. While I've been waiting for the oven to do its thing, and it's still doing those LEDs in the background, I thought I'd show the comparison. And you, could, and you can make up your minds if it's something you'd like to do or not. I'm going to do it because I enjoy the process. It's tinkering and beavering around in a workshop. It's an absolute winner in my eyes. That is a shop bought, factory produced, Gemini Solo uh, grip lid. Um, and in comparison, that's one that I've made myself using Gemini components and, and there's nothing in it. They're exactly the same. The only reason I can tell that one is the one that I did is because I've fully trimmed the nub and the one from the, uh, it's just been snipped. So those two, that's, that's the reference, that's the one that I bought. And then finally, a fully assembled, powder coated. It doesn't perform any different, it doesn't do anything any different, it works in exactly the same way, but I like it. A powder coated lead. A lot of LEDs nowadays are coming captive, powder coated like that. Things like commercially produced LEDs. So that is a six ounce plain LED, but it's powder coated. It comes powder coated. You can buy them plain LED, or you can buy them powder coated. You can powder coat them yourself. That stands out in your tackle box, doesn't it? That's a red grip LED. That's a six ounce. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm beavering away. So all we got now, I'm going to carry on and finish off these LEDs. We're going to move on to assembly. Back at the bench and I've got all my components. I've got my lead that we smelted, that you witnessed smelting. This one's not powder coated. Um, powder coated ones are still cooling down, sort of air cooling. And despite what the instructions say, and I, I have got the instructions, I found it easier if you assemble the lead because it gives you more to grip onto, more to hold. If you try inserting the wires just on that on its own, it gets a little bit awkward. And likewise, the instructions for putting the wires on do it the complete reverse of how I'm just about to do it. The instructions say to put the small end in first, locate it in the hole and grip it down. But if you look at that carefully, if you do that, it's got to turn through 90 degrees. If you put the long end in first, it's softer transitions. 
it's easier. It is genuinely easier. So they need to end up in that orientation. So I offer it through, push it through. Look how easy that is. And then the last bit is a bit of a turn and a click and you locate the grip. Going through the long end first. If you go in the short end first, you've only got one bend to go through, but it's a nightmare. It's not easy. So I would advocate the easy route, albeit it's a couple more goes. So just click it through, make the transition, clip it, and clipped into place. Easy as that. Now for comparison, I will do one the harder way, the way that's in the instructions. Because if you, if you do this properly, you should read the instructions, shouldn't you? <laughs> I don't read the instructions. I like to work things out myself. Okay, right. So, I know this is the way the instructions say. So when I put it in, I can't even do it. I can't even do it without a pair of pliers. I've done it. I've done it with a pair of long nose pliers and located it. So that's the third grip. So that was two goes with the long nose pliers. If you do it the long end in first, it's all done with your fingers. One last click and it's in. I would advocate putting it in a long way first. Here's the fun bit. <laughs> I'm going to look at another one just to make sure that I get this right. Let's have a look-see. Okay, so we have got a disc and the thing you have to pay careful attention to is that tiny little kick out. See that tiny little piece there? The other one side's smooth, one side's got a tiny little kick out. You have to orientate all of these components to that kick out. So the first bit you have to do, double checking against the reference weight, is the slot, there's a thick slot and a thin slot, the slot as it's seen there, with the nub on the right, slides on. So when you're looking at it, the nub's on the right, the slot's looking away. You then get the really difficult for sausage fingers to grip tiny little blade. See that blade? Didn't say this bit was going to be easy. And that goes in the thin slot. And what I'll do is I'll show you it in orientation. Try and cap capture it so you can see it all. Okay. That little blade is just inside there. See it inside there? And then see the orientation of the slot? So the swan neck of the blade is facing away from the line of the slot. And then the last piece. And that little nub that we looked at fits inside that little square hole on there. So lining it all up, nub side to nub side, blade, swan neck, to the cutout, start to offer it up, get everything located and then gently squeeze it all down until that little metal nub appears in that little square window. Just going to squeeze it down, squeeze it down and then it locks into place. You should now have a fully formed solo grip weight. So that's the solo splashdown mounted onto the wire that is inside your lead that's connected to the base with your grip wires and you can choose to leave it like that or there is the option if you want to and it comes with it to put some bajazzle on it do you want some little rubber tubing we'll go full tilt eh? we'll go for the lot so I've just offered it up there's probably a clever measurement you can make 
but I'm not all about those. You cut four identical lengths using a pair of snips or scissors. Scissors will cut this just as well as snips. So I've now got four pieces of that tubing. It doesn't have to be exact this piece. Slide them on one at a time. The fire's gone quiet, which means it needs some wood putting on it. And there we have it. One fully formed Gemini Solo Splashdown grip weight with working grip wires and a captive bait system for off the ground pendulum overhead thump casting that will detach as it hits the water. Hydrostatic forces run up the side of the lead and release your bait. The bait sits behind the actual weight itself helping to streamline it and that may give you a little bit of extra casting. So in this series of films the whole basis around the mind thought that we've gone through is fishing the grounds that I fish on, the ones that I want to target, using a six ounce weight maximum with a bait, large, a six and bait rod, a reel that's matched to the conditions, the line that's matched to the reel and the shock leader that's matched to that weight. If we want to downgrade from that and use a five or a four ounce weight, we're all within the safety margin of what we've designed. So that's one that I've made and assembled. That's one that I've powder coated, made and assembled. Choice is yours really. But that shows the variation. <laughs> I love my little new pasty oven. I can have pasties in the workshop now. Um, so there we have it. We've smelted the weight, we've made the weight, we've powder coated the weight, we've put the components together and we've made a grip weighted with a captive bait system. I've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to making some more. I've got about another dozen that I've got to make up. I've got another 10 that I've got to make up that I've powder coated. Um, yeah, all good. So take care, tight lines, happy fishing. I hope to see you sometime soon. From me in the workshop, from the pasty oven. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.